The very first thing you'll see when you go in the museum is a Bristol tram, a horse-drawn tram. And why should we start the story of the aircraft industry with a horse-drawn tram? Sir George White, who was the chairman of Bristol Tramways, who in 1910 decided there was a future in, the, in aircraft. So that's the start of the story. And it, 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 it's, there's a big story to tell. The way the company grew, what, uh, its wartime uh, efforts, and of course, you've got people, you've got now, nowadays here, you've got fourth generations of families who were still working, in, you know, four, the previous three generations have all worked here. So it's, it's a social history, a family history, and also a history of very good development technology, which it still is today. I mean, I, unfortunately, they don't make aeroplanes here any longer, but this is the Airbus Centre of Excellence for Wing Design, and it's following on on what ha has been the basis of uh, expertise here for the last hundred years. Uh, the particular hangars there were built, uh, not by, the, well, they, they weren't built by the company, they, they were built for the Royal Flying Corps because they were, the particular hangar that uh, the main exhibition will be in, not the new building for Concord, but the one that's already there, that was built as an acceptance park for uh, Bristol fighters being delivered to the Royal Flying Corps during the 1418 war. So it's very, it's very, uh, it, and it's been, uh, another interesting factor, that hangar has been used as an aircraft hangar for the whole of its existence. It's never been used for anything else. Although it was set up as an aircraft industry, it made all sorts of other things. Uh, they, they learnt, after the, uh, the, you know, they started in 1910, production soared right through to 1918. Would you believe they made 5,000 Bristol fighters during the 1418 war? And then there's a sudden lull in proceedings. So part of the story is, what do you do when a, f a f aircraft factory is on a war footing and it suddenly goes to peacetime? And there are great challenges. And the same thing happened after the Second World War. Now they were ready for it at that time, so they diversified. And not only, they really built, most of the time, building aircraft and engines up till then, because engines came in as well, uh, which is now Rolls-Royce, it was Bristol engines. Um, they, they came in and uh, after the war, they diversified into, um, they went into the early days of plastics, which has now become composite materials. They built helicopters here, they built cars, they went into prefabricated housing, and they went into guided weapons. And the weapon that defended us during the Cold War against the, Rus the, on the possible onslaught of Russian bombers was the Bristol Bloodhound guided missile. It was in service from 1958 to 1991, and that came from here. And behind us is one of the shining achievements, which everybody has been very keen to look at for years. And uh, it, uh, it hopefully it will be a very su super attraction in its own right. Came to be here is because the investigations into supersonic transport uh, began in the late 50s. Uh, there was a little bit of work done at Farnborough and some work done here and at Weybridge and it gradually, the, the momentum gradually took place and even I in 1958 worked on a forebear of Concorde. It was the same shape aeroplane in that, but it's had six engines in 1958. So it, it's taken all, it, it took from 1968 uh, 58. It took 10 years before the development work on it, before the aircraft flew. And of course, in that time, the French were developing a very similar aircraft. And in 1962, there was the Anglo-French Agreement, where they pooled their resources, and Concorde emerged from that. And uh, it, uh, there were 20 Concords built, all told, 10 here, 10 in Toulouse. And the particular Concorde that's behind us, is, is a rather special one. Uh, I know Concorde itself is special to Bristol, but this one is even more special because it was the last Concorde ever to fly. It didn't fly until 1979. It was the last, to, to, uh, after its first flight, it was the last Concorde ever to fly at anywhere in the world when it came back here in November 2003. Uh, it flew supersonic on both its first flight and its last flight and it is the last complete aircraft ever built at Filton.